All right, so here's one of the newer invasive species uh, taking the U.S. by storm. So these are Asian jumping worms. So this guy over here is a jumping worm, and this is a European earthworm, um, both of which are technically invasive species, but this one's become naturalized. It's been here for a long time with us, and we've kind of just grown used to having them. This is the Asian jumping worm. When you compare them side by side, this guy's much more of a reddish color. These are kind of a gray green. These, the, uh, I think it's called a clitellum, is, um, you know, it's raised up and it's a peachy color, whereas these are the clitellums. Smooth, it's pretty flush with the body, and it's a whitey gray color. Another way for identification, and probably the, one of the more reliables, is their defensive behaviors. So a common earthworm, when they're, you know, being threatened, they'll kind of squint you up like this. They'll, they'll writhe around a little bit, but they don't go crazy. In comparison, the Asian jumping worms will flip out when they feel threatened. Sometimes they get so, there they go, so wired up that they actually jump. Hence the name, jumping worms. So a lot of you are out there probably thinking, what's the big deal? You know, they're, they're worms, how much harm can they cause? So the problem with the Asian jumping worms, and you'll see one right, right here, is they don't burrow down into the soil like other earthworms do. So they stay right there on the surface. So the problem with that is they're eating all this really nutritious uh, leaf litter layer and debris layer at the top of the um, soil le level. And they create this soil, because they're such good at processing it, that's this real, real rich soil. But the problem is it can wash away easily with erosion. And um, it really doesn't pull anything down underground to kind of recycle nutrients. So they just stay in one spot and they wash off the surface level easily. And they cause this, this coffee ground looking soil, which isn't really good for a lot of plants. So if you go hiking in an area where you suspect or you know that jumping worms are, um, just be really sure to stomp out the mud on your boots and stuff before you go home and hopefully again when you get home so that they don't spread because their egg cases can travel in the treads of your shoes and spread to your yard. So definitely be careful. Okay, so I figure I'll just leave you with uh, one more quick shot just showing you the most common behavior is the snake-like movement, and that's a pretty good way to identify them. So if you see a worm acting like this, there's a, there's a good chance it is, in fact, one of these jumping worms. All right, well, thank you guys for watching, and uh, yeah, feel free to share this around. Thanks.